Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 443 for Tuesday, the 15th of March. Yay! You know what that means. It's called March Break here in Canada. That is why I'm here. Sasha Yay! Dermatis is off work and joining us live in studio on the co-host desk and filling in for Sasha Dermatis over on the news desk. Jeff Weston. Jeff, man, how are you? I'm good. This feels like role reversal. I Isn't walk it in weird? and Sasha's like, hey, you got the news. I'm doing co-host. That's just the way it's going to be. It's just like that. Right. The yeah. strong arm. Listen, retro is in, folks. And uh, tonight we're going to be reviewing our retro gaming system, the Retro Pi. It's powered by the Raspberry Pi microcomputer. Jeff and I built it last week. We're going to be checking in with it and finding out how it performs with a PS3 wireless controller. So super cool. And also, speaking of retro, retro style gaming, we have Gene Leggett. So if you remember those choose your own adventure computer games. Oh, yeah. Jean Leggett is from One More Story Games, um, and she's joining to talk about turning stories into video games. And we'll be sharing the inside scoop on their brand new game. Perfect. Jeff, over in the newsroom, what's coming up? Well, here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Minecraft is to become a testing ground for artificial intelligence experiments. Ooh. A new computer from Toronto, Stealth.com, is completely waterproof, rugged and ready for the worst conditions. Google has lost their Android appeal in Russia. Not appeal as in, hey, we want this, but appeal as an illegal appeal. Microsoft says it will still accept Bitcoin after inaccurate info was released. Amazon is trying to patent paying with a selfie, but they're not the first to come up with the idea. And Philips has their, their latest hue lights may help you sleep. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I am Sasha Dermatis. And over there in the newsroom, hi Jeff. I'm Jeff West. Nice to see you. It's all sultry like. <laughs> it's not intentional. <laughs> well, hello, Jeff. Hello, Internet. Hey, Internet is up this week. Yes, that's, which is exciting. That's kind of a bonus. Uh, yes. We can actually bring the show to you live. Last week, uh, of course, Internet uh, was down at just the right time. Went down about 10 after 6, came back up at 8.25 you know, in the evening. You know what was funny? Like, every single week, I think to myself on Tuesdays, man, I wish I was on the show. Without fail, every single week. But yeah. then I watched last week's show. It was the first time I ever thought, so happy I'm not on Oh yeah, this week. I think we pulled it off. Uh, I really do. Um, there was no explanation from the ISP, Jeff, about why Internet was down. Uh, however, just so you know, from this system here, from the systems here in the studio, we have a, a small tower in the front foyer. Mm-hmm. And that shoots the uh, signal across the road to a great big tower uh, just just down over the hill, and we can see a line of sight from our from our studio. Uh, so we reckon that probably they were doing some maintenance, took down an antenna to put up a new one. The window was just about right, but it just happened to be, hey, let's start at 20 after six. Everybody's gone home from work, right? right? So it'll only affect this industrial plaza. And here we are in that industrial plaza trying to broadcast a show live. Yeah. But tonight we got it. We're well, up. Maybe we'll take one of the vinyl stickers and just stick it right on that tower with our hours. <laughs> That's just, just in case. Idea. Just say, hey, you know, please come don't on. Please disable yeah, between. Please don't, <laughs> don't do it. We yeah. need you. Uh, no, the Bell Canada, they wouldn't care. <laughs> just whatever. Pull the plug. Yeah. <laughs> It's just lucky that it came back up. Maybe they would just pick us up as their, you know, pet project. You know how some big Not after what will? I just said. That's true. Yeah, I just burned that bridge. Darn. They've been pretty reliable, all things considering. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's been pretty good. Except for that one time last week. That one time last week. That's what we're going to say every week. <laughs> 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 They've been wonderful, except that one time last week. All right. Well, it's going to be great tonight. Uh, hey, by the way, please show Category 5 TV some love. We do what we do free of charge, and it does cost us money. So head on over to our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Category 5. I did it today. Thank and you. And it is easy. I even, I, I like, support the show. So we all know here, like, let's be frank, that I am not the most savvy person as far as. Technically savvy. 
technically savvy person. So if I can get into Patreon, log on, find Category 5, and pledge. I did $1 an episode, which is not not Thank nothing you. not and like it's it's really nothing in the scheme of things i'm not going to barely notice that right you, but it you adds might up. not or you might not right. um but we do because there's power in numbers I, I i say that quite often but with the number of viewers that we have if if enough of us would all come together and say hey let's support this thing we really love category 5 tv and everything that they're doing everything they stand for let's keep the lights on let's keep the bills paid and let's keep that internet up and running i had a conversation in the chat room where someone said well can't you have a second fallback internet service <laughs> yeah i'd love that we're on lte so if all I'd have to do is just pick up an LTE card for right. another ISP, and then I could just pop out the LTE card, uh, the SIM card, and pop in the other one, the alternate. Well, that'd but be you're nice. paying you're paying the fees for that. Yeah. So we try to keep costs <laughs> low too. So, but I know that it's not for lack of love. People. Sure. I know that people love us. It's just maybe a lack of. We love you too. Knowledge on how easy it is. It's so super easy. We appreciate everybody who has shown their support so far and continues to do through uh, do so through our Patreon page, through our tip jar, uh, where you can actually subscribe via PayPal to contribute. Some people, for, for one reason or another, don't want to use Patreon. Uh, so you can do that through PayPal. Or you can send checks if you want to. I, but for those of you who have supported us, thank you so much. And if you haven't yet, but you're thinking you might like to, then I would ask that you go through one of those means, and it really mm -hmm. does make a difference. And if enough of us uh, can come together and do that, then our bills are covered. That means less stress for me. It means we're going to hire Sasha on for thousands of dollars, <laughs> and then she can take Tuesday nights off and be here with us. How's that sound, Jeff? I think it sounds wonderful. It, sounds, it sounds like you're trying to give her her news back, and I'm just not ready for that. I don't know, but the viewers, the viewers love Sasha and well, want her back. We all love Sasha. I know. So, you know, I'm bring her cry. back, folks. I feel like I'm like on an awards <laughs> How's show. That? How's I that like for a, a, a <laughs> beg for money, eh? <laughs> Sasha, please. Love. Save Sasha. <laughs> it's like we, all we need now is like Jan Arden playing a song or something <laughs> like that. You know? eyes. Yeah. I need a cardboard, <laughs> piece of cardboard. <laughs> there you go. Oh, dear. Moving along. <laughs> Sasha, Category yes. 5 TV is a member of... The Tech Podcast Network. Where is it? The Tech Podcast Network. <laughs> if I'd it's tech, it's here. It's been a while. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, which is cat5.tv slash IAIB. Mac users got whacked away with a terrible <gasps> ransomware just a couple weeks back. So what would that do? Ransomware, uh, if you remember the episode, and you can go onto our website, category5.tv, type in Crypto Locker, and you're gonna see a really cool episode where, uh, where uh, Krista and myself spoke with, um, with a gentleman from Malwarebytes mm -hmm. about what ransomware is and how dangerous it is. What ransomware does is once it gets into your computer, Mm -hmm. It then encrypts all your files, so your pictures, your documents, your QuickBooks, your email, everything right. gets encrypted, but you don't know the decryption password. <gasps> so then a pop-up comes up and says, if you want to have your files back, pay us. And there's really, like, there's nothing you wouldn't pay for those pictures or files, but really. I, but, if, but then it goes through your mind, if I pay these malicious people who are obviously untrustworthy, shady practice right are they going to give me my files back right have they already been shut down and i'm going to just be throwing this money in the garbage kind of thing and it's pretty pricey mm -hmm. so anyways if you are on a mac and you run transmission that's a scary thing it was the transmission BitTorrent client which comes on a lot of systems already pre-installed and for some reason i thought mac was like for some reason i thought mac what is it are they not Obviously, they're not foolproof. They're, I thought that the they were the The world is safe. changing, Sasha. I thought they were safe. They were not Windows. Microsoft. Safer. Yeah, safer. Safer. Not safest. But not... Uh, it, like, Linux is the same kind of way where it's a lot safer than Microsoft Windows because you're not always running as the root user. But right. the moment that you run an upgrade say you're updating your software and it says enter your password for this update yeah. and that update includes ransomware that update is running as 
the root user. So now you've got the exact same problem as Windows users. It's able to run as the administrator user. Now, we've got a question in the chat room specifically about that torrent software. Yeah. Is the Linux version unsafe too, or is it just the Mac version? The Linux version was not affected. As far as uh, transmission found, um, somebody had compromised their website, and we're hearing about all this kind of stuff. You know, it happened to Linux Mint recently where some malware got into the ISO. So if you downloaded Linux Mint on the particular day, you got a malware version of the, the operating system because people are using and trusting software on their websites that may be out of date or uh, right. able to be compromised, and that's what happened to transmission. So somebody was able to compromise the website, upload a new version of, their, of the update, mm -hmm. and then users on Mac got that infection, and it only affected Mac users. So transmission, when they realized that the problem existed, they immediately released a fixed version. Uh, so it is, of course, available on their website. Make sure you go over to the transmission website and get that installed on your Mac system if you run transmission. Really important to stay up to date with the software. And it's a scary thing because you think, okay, I'm getting my updates. That's going to keep me safe. Right. That's is what there, they're for, right? There's nothing you could do to know. You can actually, uh, yeah, with this particular one, just look at the version. When you go to the transmission website, it'll tell you it'll what tell the infected you. version okay. is or what the affected version is. Um, let's go there now and just take yeah. a quick look. Is uh, there any way to to maybe delay updates or something to make sure? Sure. Right? Yeah, there is. But then again, you have that I'm, upgrading, I'm updating because I want to stay up to date and right. safe, right? Yes. So oh. here's an update that is uh, recommended for you, though, and it's right on the homepage of transmissionbt.com. If you run a Mac, this is extremely important. So it was version 2.9 on OS X. Uh, you need to immediately upgrade to 2.92, and that's going to get rid of that exploit for you. But yeah, it's a strange thing to see something that um, dangerous. Yeah. going out onto Mac, onto Mac computers. I understand that, it, that uh, you know, like when, a, when something like CryptoLocker came out, tens of thousands of people were infected and files destroyed, and mm -hmm. it was an, uh, just a horrible situation. Now, this is much more contained, and I think it's more around like 7,000 people that were affected. It's probably not a lot of people, but still a very still scary situation really and we need scary. to be mindful that hey maybe mac is not you can't just go on the web on a mac same with linux and just expect i can do anything and i'm not going to get infected because it can happen people can find ways to get around those kinds of things and usually it, it comes with a little bit of social engineering like i said you had to say yeah let's run as root let's enter our password in order to let this thing run mm -hmm. but we fall for it because it's an update Mm -hmm. So if we're not really meticulously watching those things, it could happen to you. All right, shall we get into it? Yes, we shall. We had built a RetroPie system last week. Uh, and this, did you see this? I did. Oh, it's so, so cool. So cool. Jeff? I just ordered it myself. You ordered one? Yes. Nice. I know. After seeing the episode? Yeah. Nice. I didn't even watch the full episode. I had to come here. She's to just do like this one. retro pie. Sweet. Like, I will buy I will get Amazon this. link on category five dot TV. That's what I did. You know what? You can actually go to cat five dot TV slash pie, and that's going to hook you up with the full Raspberry Pi three kit. Jeff, I understand you've got one on the way. It's coming. After the episode last week, I, I went home and I'm like, I, I've got to get the pie because I want this at home, and uh, I bought the Pi three. Okay. So 1.2 uh, gigahertz yep. versus my Pi 2, which is 900 megahertz. Yes. Uh, you've got one gig of RAM. Yep. And the kit comes with everything. The yeah, case, I, I think it came with like a 32 gig card and, and nice. something like that. So pre-installed with noobs. So yes. You've got uh, yeah, it's all the OS there. already ready I to go. I bought the power supply as well. Uh, I just got nice. a shipping notification today. That's going to show up in two weeks. And the nice. pie shows up. It's saying this Friday. So I'm really excited. That's cool. So, and you know, I was telling my kids about the retro gaming platform. And I'm like, guys, when this is done, we're going to have this at home. And they're like, yeah, we want to try it. <laughs> I'm like, I think you should. So I'm excited to get it set up at home. Now, for those of you who are watching at home, in our virtual studio, Jeff is over here. 
in our real physical server, he's over here. Oh, do I? So oh, we're, is that so we're, so we're, we're both like looking away from you. It's like, <laughs> oh, we have our backs to you, sir. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> so we will figure that out and fix that up. Maybe flip things or, that's, you know, do, yeah. do so a rude. little flip. That's rude. I am so, sorry. I should I be looking sorry. over here then? Yeah, that's where we are. Why Hello. are you looking away from us? <laughs> Where, oh, where oh, are you? Oh, hey. So we should be that way. Yeah. yeah. But then I, oh, that's so confusing and trippy. Right. Okay, retro pie. I, yes, retro pie. Retro pie. Jeff and I. Speaking of pie, wasn't oh. pie day yesterday? Was that pie day? Mark, it, we was. Yes. 3. it was. 3.14. Pie day was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Nice. Right. Happy belated pie day, everybody. Happy pie day. 3.15 today. Okay. Looking at the Pi microcomputer, we've set it up as RetroPie. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check out episode number 432 of Category 5 Technology TV. Jeff, last week uh, we, you brought in a PS3 Bluetooth controller. I did. This is a sweet little DualShock 3, and we actually have added these to the link at cat5.tv slash Pi. So if you don't have a PlayStation 3, you can actually buy these. And this becomes your controller for the Retro Pi. So, cool. so Pi 2 did not include built-in Bluetooth. Right. So if you have a Pi 2 that you didn't buy through the kit, because our kit comes with a Bluetooth adapter, um, if you don't have a Bluetooth adapter, we've got one of those on there. The Pi 3, however, Jeff, uh, does have built-in Bluetooth. I'm hooked so up. So you don't have to have any kind of separate Sweet. device to connect your controller. Okay, but what we do, what we did find last week that we needed was uh, an internet connection. Turns yes. out. Turns out. Because when you first connect your PS3 controller, it's going to say the drivers have not yet been installed. Let's go out using apt-get and install, and it downloads some stuff from GitHub, clones the repository, yeah. and installs it, compiles it, and it's all automated. It's beautiful. So we do that in the, uh, the retropy-setup.sh script. I showed you that last week, uh, and we went through some of the configuration options. One of the other things that I have changed is that I did turn on overclocking. My okay. 900 megahertz system seemed to lag a little bit, so I did bring it up to one gigahertz. Okay. And we realized that you, you might be bringing down the life of your Pi a little bit because you're, you're overclocking it, it gets hotter, you're pushing more power through it, right? So the point is you eat your Pi too fast and it might go away. You get heartburn, folks. Thinking life you of get pie. heartburn. <laughs> yeah. The life of Pi. You brought down your life of Pi. <laughs> You can, you can read so much into this. Um, so with it overclocked, it does a little bit better. I still had problems with N64. However, oh. I know. However, Super Nintendo, brilliant. Really? NES, brilliant. Atari 2600, of course. Okay, amazing. Because yeah. I feel like the reason why I'm getting this is for Pitfall. Only for the game Pitfall. N That's all. NES or Super NES? I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> Dave said, I really want to play Pitfall. And I was like, I'll get you. Pitfall was on so many different platforms. It was even on Atari 2600. I think that the would original. be it. I think it's probably that one. Yeah? The original? Yeah, Can you? 40. We're going to play Atari 2600 with a PS3 controller with 20 buttons. Kind of You awesome. in? Mind blown. Okay. So we've got what I've done. Now, here's all you have to do to get this controller up and going. You plug in. This is standard USB mini. You plug in uh, the USB cord. Mm -hmm. You plug it into the Pi. And then you go into the setup script. And you go to, uh, just like we did on the show, episode number 432. And you set it to um, install the controller. Then it detects it. And then you'll see the light actually come on. So. If this works, now I've got the Pi running. It's a little faded because it's kind of in a screensaver state right now. I'm going to push the power button on the front of the controller here, and you'll see the lights flash. It's vibrating, and it's going through its motions here. I'm watching it on screen so that I can see what you see. There it is. It is controller one. Very Look at that. cool. Just like that. So now the screen is no longer dim, and it says hold in your button to configure your device. So as I push a button, huh, look at that. Okay, I'm going to hold it in. Look at that. Okay, D-pad up. Press anything. Okay, well, I'm going to push D-pad up, obviously. Uh, D-pad down, D-pad left, right. Start is start. Select is select. A uh, would be the X, the square maybe, you think? Didn't you set this up last week? Yeah. Well, that was on a keyboard, remember? Right. Right? So this the is keyboard. on this controller. First time I'm connecting it, 
Right. So now it's asking me to, to go through the configuration wizard. Okay, so I'm going to say it's, I'm going to just say that it is the square. Does it take it? Yeah. Already taken. Oh. No, do oh, this side. Oh, because it's just gone to B. Okay. Yeah, do your left side, B maybe. B is going to be my X. X is going to be a triangle, and Y is going to be the circle. Okay, left bottom. That's going to be my analog. Oh, no, that's the button. Left bottom is number two. Right bottom is oh, number okay. two on the right. Left top. Right top, okay. Left thumb. So that's actually pushing in on the analog stick, so actually clicking in on here, right. okay? So I'm going to do that. Let's like see. L3. There we go. Right thumb. Push down. Left User. analog up. So that's up, left analog down, left, right. Right analog up, down, left, right. And then I'm okay. So I'm going to push the... PlayStation? Start, do you think? No, yeah, maybe this one. No, that turns off the controller. All the time? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I just pushed a whole bunch of buttons, folks, and it worked. It let me in. In just true turkey <laughs> fashion. <laughs> yeah, just like that. I'm just pushing a bunch of buttons like I'm hacking the system. Okay, so now I'm using the D-pad, and look at that. I pushed the square. There we go. Here's our games. Wow. Look at that. Super Mario All-Stars. Anybody game? I am playing Super Mario All-Stars any moment now. Here it comes. <laughs> Did you see that in the bottom left? PS3 controller. This is the real deal, folks, and we're doing it with a PS3 controller. There it is. <laughs> Super Mario, the original. Super Mario Bros. The Lost this Levels 2, 3. Okay, press start. It allows saving. You can create a file! No way! Okay. I'm. Is Super Mario cool, Jeff? Super Mario is totally cool. I think this is a game that my kids would love to play. I wish they were here. Oh! <gasps> Owen, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> okay, are you into Super Mario? Um, hey, you like Super Mario. He's like, that's yeah. way too retro. Okay. <laughs> Let's, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change our screen here because through the magic of television, I can actually put the Raspberry Pi up behind uh, you guys. Look at that. So we're in Mario now? So it now, yeah, you are actually. Well, I could. <laughs> so, oh, and I'm going to, if you come over to my set here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give you this controller. We're going to get this fired up for you. Have you ever played Mario? You have to speak really loud just because you don't have a mic. This is Mario 3. Oh, look at that. He has never played Mario 3 okay, before. Okay, folks. This is going to be one of those, like, kids react videos. <laughs> okay? So here you go. I, I'm going to, you know, I, you've got a choice. I can bring it up here, then you're here, or I can bring it up on the big screen. You good with that? Um. Yeah? There it is. Let's see what, uh, what Owen comes up with. So you want to... So you're this little red guy up at the top left there. Okay. So, and you're going to use the D-pad. He's trying to use the analog sticks, folks. He's actually moving it like a phone. <laughs> There you go. Okay, go up to number one. That's level one. And then... And then start. See the start button? Oh, no, maybe it's the X. Or the square. There's 20 buttons you have to choose. <laughs> Try the square. There we go. The sound on this is <gasps> awesome, too. I don't, I don't think we have sound. Just press a whole bunch of okay, buttons. Okay, yeah, push a whole bunch of buttons until you jump on the guy. Oh! Oh! <laughs> See, this is the problem with retro games, is they're so primitive compared to what kids are playing with nowadays that they're like, what do we do? I mean, I get tripped out by um, oh, I think uh, pipes. Pipes just messes with my head. Oh, yeah? Going down jump, the pipes? Jump, jump, jump. Yeah. Go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now. And now move. move along. Like, to, move. you have to actually walk to and places. And then jump now. Now. And try to hit those question mark guys. Oh! oh. Venus Flytrap gonna get you. <laughs> so, so much fun. How cool is that, right? So these are retro games. These are like from when your dad was a kid. And, and absolutely classic. Thank you so much for coming on and thanks for giving that a go with us. What do you think? It's Can responsive, eh? Like it actually, it actually plays. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think? I'm not gonna be any good thanks at so this, much. just so you know. Okay, so it's D-pad controls. Just like the, the retro. Yeah, you got it. No, not at all. Oh. I got it. All right, yeah. Uh, I don't know, we broke it. Uh oh. Ah, uh, you're still connected. Oh well, good demonstration all the same. Oh, 
That's why. What happened? There you go. I uh, toggled the bottom part there. I don't know what that means. Okay, here goes Sasha, folks. Oh, wait. Ready? D-pad. D-pad, yeah. Oh, she's got oh. it. I wish that I could give you guys audio, and I could if I turned on the HDMI audio, but we usually turn that off just because otherwise we get That's echo right. and stuff. Our sultry yeah. voices are good enough. You know? <laughs> I feel like I'm... Oh, I was supposed to jump on that guy and then kick him over. <laughs> Can't this is my job. Yeah! Oh! That was well done. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. That's the Retro Pie. Check out episode number 442 of Category 5 Technology TV. That's going to show you how you can build one. And the Raspberry Pi 3 kit right now is available for you. About $80 to $90 US, which translates into about $110 Canadian. And that kit comes with everything. And you can get that from cat5.tv slash pie. Without an E. It's not the delicious kind. Yeah, P.I. It's yeah. P.I. P.I. There you go. And it doesn't come with kids. No kids no, included. No, no kids included. Games included. <laughs> nice. I'm just going to leave that up for a while. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's so nice to have you here. You can check out our website at www.category5.tv. Jeff, we're going to head over to the newsroom and check out those stories that you were telling us about off the top of the show. Don't forget... We have Jean Leggett joining us from One More Story Games. And she is going to be talking to us about how you, if you are an author, if you love to write, you can create your very own choose-your-own-adventure style video game through the service that they're providing. Or if you're a gamer, hey, maybe you want to play some of these games. They really take me back because it really does remind me a lot of some of the games that we had when we were kids, when those kind of you know interactive storytelling games were uh, a real thing. Well, it's coming back, folks, and that is what Gene is here to tell us about, and uh, their company is at the forefront of it. So stick around. Jeff. Over to you in the Category 5 TV newsroom. All right. It's Tuesday, March 15th, 2016, and here are the stories we're covering this week. Minecraft has become a testing ground for artificial intelligence experiments. A new computer from Toronto's Stealth.com is completely waterproof, rugged, and ready for the worst of conditions. Google has lost their Android legal appeal in Russia, and Microsoft says it will still accept Bitcoin after inaccurate info was released. Amazon is trying patent paying with Selfie, uh, but they're not the first one to come up with the idea. And Philips' latest Hue lights may help you sleep. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Robbie Ferguson, and I love being a Vimeo Pro member. As a web broadcaster, I need an affordable video hosting platform that's as flexible as me. A pro membership lets you upload up to 20 gigabytes of HD video each and every week with no additional bandwidth restrictions. That means if you produce a show that uses even up to 20 gigabytes of storage, your limit resets itself the following week, so you can do another 20 gigabytes. And keep doing that week after week. Now Category 5, with all of our shows, use roughly 10 gigabytes per week. From there, Vimeo automatically generates all the files that you need to provision your RSS feeds, Roku channel, website media player, or even video downloads in multiple bit rates, with no limits on your bandwidth usage or how many people can access your files. What's best? The price is astonishingly affordable. And for a limited time, friends of the Category5.tv network will receive a whopping 25% off the annual price. All you have to do is go through our link, cat5.tv slash Vimeo, and sign up today for your 25% discount. To top it off, you get 30 days to try it risk-free. If you're not happy with Vimeo Pro, you pay nothing. The deal is only for a very limited time. Go to cat5.tv slash Vimeo. I'm Jeff Wesson, and here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Microsoft, owner of the popular video game Minecraft, which, by the way, I had no clue they bought Mojang. That just blew my mind when I found that out today. Oh, Jeff. Uh, oh, Jeff. Lay it on the times. What can I say? Anyway, so they revealed that computer scientists and amateurs will be able to evaluate and develop artificial intelligence software using its virtual landscapes beginning this July. The company says Minecraft is more sophisticated than existing artificial intelligence research simulations and cheaper to use than building a robot. 
Professor Jose Hernandez Oralo from the Technical University of Valencia believes this has great potential. He says, this is the state of the art. At this moment, there is nothing comparable, and this is just in its beginnings, so I see many possibilities for it. To take advantage of, of this offer, users will need to install AIX, which is a software platform that hooks into Minecraft and allows artificial intelligence code to control a character and get feedback about the consequences of its actions. AIX will be open source, meaning the only cost involved will be that of buying a standard license for the game. The experiments will run on researchers' own computers and be roped off from normal players. However, in time, the aim is to allow people to interact with the code. Now, maybe it's not to the same degree, but I know that there's mods for Minecraft where the AI will do things for you. Like, you can get a... a um, like non person players kind of thing? Where they'll specifically go searching around and mining for certain types of ore. Oh, really? Yeah, so you can get oh, mods that's like that already. Yeah. So there's already a bit of an AI built into it, um, but uh, obviously they're going to be taken to the next level. So, so next yeah, could it be more like they're saying, okay, here's a platform where we can see how things react to other things, like physics and how, uh, how a non-player person character can do things within the world and then get a feedback response and then learn from it. So machine learning in a way. I suppose. Mm. Uh, I guess. But I mean are they going to be testing how far you get blown up by a creeper? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay, Stealth.com has released a high-performance, rugged, waterproof, fanless PC. The WPC725F has a small footprint and is built specifically for harsh environments where ordinary computer hardware won't survive. It's completely watertight, surviving liquids, chemicals, dust, and dirt intrusion and meets all kinds of environmental specifications. The design lets the CPU and other components cool uh, without the use of fans or moving parts, making it entirely silent. The power, video, serial, and USB connections are coupled through watertight locking bayonet style connectors, typical of military grade hardware, and a solid state hard drive is, allowed, uh, is used to allow the computer to operate in extreme temperatures with high vibration, high humidity, and high altitude. The most basic configuration of the waterproof PC starts at $2,100 US, and it's shipping now. So if you've got about $10,000 Canadian, you might be able to get a down <laughs> payment for it. <laughs> so. um, this I would need for my life, because evidently I'm a bit spilly Just in that's general. the way you do it? Like I just Maybe they need to like just put a monitor on it and say, here you go, Sasha? Exactly. This one's for you. It's Sasha-proof. <laughs> See, I know that they've got those laptops that um, paramedics and police use in their cars. Um, because they're more rugged style to begin with. But it sure. makes me wonder if something like this is going to revolutionize it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how often it's going to rain inside of a police car, but maybe uh, they I need wonder protection. what it makes me think about is things like, rather than rain, think about condensation or mm -hmm. submersion. So think about um, in um, underwater civilizations. Let's build Atlantis. Let's go to space where condensation is a real problem hmm. for electronic components. And here's a computer that, uh, you know, Raspberry Pi is revolutionary, uh, revolutionizing things when it comes to portable computers and small computing. But here's something that is built to be entirely rugged from right. the ground up. Like that's specifically what they're doing. Take it to space. That's what I think. Or to Sasha's house, and it's still safe. It's still <laughs> safe. It didn't actually say Sasha-proof on the box, folks. So if you think it's Sasha-proof, it might not be. Sorry, so guys. So just be careful. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's a will, <laughs> Sasha will find a way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Google has failed to overturn a Russian ruling that said it broke competition laws by tying together its Android services to ensure its apps were pre-installed on smartphones and tablets. The original case followed a complaint by its Russian rival, Yandex. Google has denied forcing device makers to install its YouTube, Maps, and photo software alongside Android, and now faces having to reward, uh, reword its contracts with manufacturers and pay a fine based on its local earnings. Is this not just the software that comes automatically installed? Like, what's the issue? I mean, I, I realize I'm not legally based when this kind of stuff comes out, but... I think there's some kind of wording in their contract with the phone manufacturers that makes them think it, it's, I, I think they've worded it such a way that they can say, oh no, we didn't say that, but they did say it has to come with it. Right. So you have to include the official YouTube app and nothing but. 
Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's kind of like that legal gray, fancy steps. A little bit, like they're they are sidestepping the what they're actually saying and making it so that yeah, the manufacturers understand what we're saying, but we're not actually saying it. Right. Gotcha. So hey, Russia stepped in and said, you know what, you need to change that. All right. Cool. Yeah. Bitcoin was almost dealt a major blow this week when it seemed that Microsoft would stop accepting the crypto- cryptocurrency for digital purchases through customer accounts. But the company now says uh, through an update to support the, uh, to their support page that was posted erroneously and contained inaccurate information. Bitcoin, Microsoft says, will still be honored. Microsoft spokesperson said in the statement, we continue to support Bitcoin for adding money to your Microsoft account, which can be used for purchasing content in the Windows and Xbox stores. We apologize for the inaccurate information that was inadvertently posted to a Microsoft site, which is currently being corrected. It's unclear how exactly the information made its way to the page, but Bitcoin boosters will take some solace in the fact that one of the currency's major corporate bastions is still safe. When I first heard the story that Microsoft was pulling out of Bitcoin, I was like, no way, this could signal the end of Bitcoin. And then I heard that Microsoft was back in, and it made me wonder if this is one of those things where they were going to pull out, (laughs) but somebody leaked the information, and then they're going, no, 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 just an error, my bad, my bad. You know, no, we didn't really write that in the contract. It's not really there. <laughs> That's right. But it makes you you wonder, like, how is this going to, is this just some fancy work to say, no, no, that wasn't the intent, but really it was, and now they've got to delay their plan. You know, it starts making you question. Oh, boy. Conspiracy theories abound here, Jeff. Oh, Thanks, it's man. True. It's so Never true. saw it. Now I see it. Mm. All right. Well, I'm just trying to open your eyes. Yeah. Man. Thanks, man. Take the red pill. All right, a newly filed patent outlines how an Amazon shopper could authorize a purchase using a photo of oneself instead of a password. Selfie Pay is designed to ease the process of verifying transactions as customers make more purchases online via mobile devices. It's also thought to be more secure than punching in a password or a PIN. As Amazon explains in the filing, facial recognition is more secure than entering passwords, which can be stolen. Entering long passwords, the company says, can also be cumbersome on mobile devices. Instead, Amazon suggests a computing device may capture an image of a user and analyze that image uh, in an attempt to recognize the user uh, using their facial recognition software. MasterCard began testing its facial recognition capabilities in 2015, and USAA, a financial services organization for U.S. military members and their families, also started utilizing selfies as logins last year, while Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba is working on facial recognition software that would let customers pay for purchases just by looking at a screen. Here's my problem with this. What happens if you set up your face, the next day you get hit with a baseball, suddenly you got a goose egg, and you can't <laughs> buy your pie? There you go. Right. Your face is distorted. Yeah. Or maybe, sure. you know, <laughs> knock on wood, you get in a car accident, and you've got some scars. This changes your face. What about facial transplants? Right. Now you're giving somebody your face so they could buy your purchases. And on top of that, there's been photographers have gone around the world and they've found doppelgangers Ex- all yeah. through the globe. So if somebody's, I mean, it's like an episode from Joey where they've got twin hands. you got twin faces out there. That person's going to buy all your stuff and you're never going to see it. Right. It, or the magical world of makeup. Right? You see yes. all of those videos yeah. with people like transforming the way their face looks. Like girls look completely different at the beginning of the video than they do at the end of the video. So every bald man that we encounter, my kids say, Dad, that guy looks like you. Right. <laughs> Don't know if that's related, but <laughs> But what I what I'm thinking is, I mean, you can do makeup to look like anybody. You could make me look like anybody probably with similar features with just a little bit of Hollywood makeup. I, I if could, I I could see if they incorporated voice recognition to it. I could maybe It's got to be it has to be a, a multi authentication. Can't just be the face. It, it has to be. I do like though looking at the patent here cuz my first thought was well just hold up a picture. And what does it say there in figure 440? Please, please blink. blink your right eye. What if you have a stroke? And you're <laughs> Yeah. Wow, we point. thought of it all, folks. <laughs> We've got it all. We didn't bring here. up the twin angle, identical twins. twins. I know, and I have twins in my family, but neither of them are an evil twin, right? So they wouldn't be well, using that's it for... Unless, uh, are you the evil twin? Oh. I don't like...
like this. <laughs> see, I can see paying with your eye. I mean, we've got eye scanners that, that lock down government facilities. I can see that because it's you can't replicate your eye. Although I've they... seen this in movies, and people don't end well when somebody's trying to scan an eye. Fair enough. What was that minority report? A little bug goes in there and screws his eyeball out and puts a new one? I don't know. <laughs> How about it just is old school with a password and a pin? Like, I hate to say it, but maybe we have done enough. Like, Remember when passwords used to be just God? Like, that was one of the most number one passwords was people would write God. Oh, really? Like, it's it's not like that anymore. Now you got to use your face. <laughs> That's right. Technology, man. It's I don't moving know. us. Like a drop of blood. <laughs> please, right. please, right. please place blood sample here. What there movie was it? Gattaca. Gattaca <laughs> did the blood. That's right. And they'll be able to check your sugar while you're at it. <laughs> That's right. Purchase a pie and check for diabetes. <laughs> Perfect. And, right. yeah, log in. P-I-E or P-I? Oh, That's boy. right. Oh, boy. Okay, moving oh, boy. on. <laughs> Phillips has smart hue light bulbs that produce flashy colors. But what about bulbs that change just enough to give you a good night's rest? You're set after today. The lighting firm is trotting out Hue White Ambience Light that offer color temperatures that mimic uh, natural light, helping you sleep naturally. Combined with new routines in an upcoming version of the Hue app, they can shift gradually to reflect day and night cycles. A sleep mode can use dimming light to replicate the sunset, for example, while wake up brightens the area. There's even a night light mode to help kids get back to sleep after wandering from the hallway. Logically, the new Hue offering uh, should also be useful creating different moods. You could have a cool, crisp lighting in the workplace or warmer temperatures in the living room, or maybe when somebody really ticks you off, get the evil red glow, and you're like, welcome to your punishment. Uh, could be many different avenues of this. <laughs> like the North Korea lighting. <laughs> it really reminds me. Now, this is, this is a growing market. And uh, we looked at Illumi, uh, these light bulbs that are very much like that. They're smart light bulbs. We looked at them on episode number 439. Same sort of thing. You can actually tone the color and you can ha set up a sunrise and it will wake you up. Instead of an eh, 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 alarm clock, you can wake up to a nice sunrise. That's pretty cool. And at so now Philips is doing it too. At the beginning of the story, I was like, wow, how smart the people who invented the light bulbs that help for sleep. So all I have to do is say, sell you a bulb that doesn't work. Like, we have created <laughs> it's dark. darkness. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> this is how you sleep. It has to do with toning down uh, certain hues of color at night so that it doesn't stimulate you and keep right. you awake. This is why you're supposed to stay away from your screen for the last hour before sure. you go to sleep. Yeah, phones are notorious for yeah, blue light and keeping you awake. Uh, check out episode number 439 if you're interested in that. Sorry to annex your, your, your it's stuff here. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. Big thanks this week to Roy w, w. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you found a news story that you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the Category 5, Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Jeff Weston. Thanks, Jeff. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson, and tonight I'm joined by Gene Leggett, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. You know what? I'm so excited to be here. It's so cool that you and uh, One More Story Games are from Barrie, Ontario. I know. I, I feel sometimes like we're the only game studio north of Newmarket, Toronto. You say that, now all of a sudden there's going to be all these emails. Oh, we're in, you know, Barrie, and there's like 10 of them. And I would really like to meet the other people, because what we're doing is already challenging enough to be a game studio north of Toronto and it would be really great to meet the other people. Cool. We are big on retro gaming and your platform really, it, you know, I know that it's modern. I know that you've got a real modern spin to it and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, but it does take me back. Back to the days when gaming was storytelling. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your company, what it is that you do? Sure. So my husband is sort of like the visionary behind the company. My job is the evangelist. I go and I talk oh, okay. to people, right? So I spread the word of One More Story Games. Yep. And, you know, Blair really started making his first game when he was eight years old. And he played a lot of the Ultima series. So do you remember the there Ultima series? There you go. Series? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a period of time where... Uh, in 2009, he had worked for EA for almost eight years, and they laid a lot of staff off. Sure. So in his spare time, I guess he had a lot of spare time, uh, he recreated Ultima 4 in Flash. 
Nice. And if you ask nicely, we might tell you where that is. Could we like link to it? Pa- uh, no. Could, is it is it proprietary or is it open? Well, Good Old Games has the rights for it now. Oh, but right. It's right. The whole idea yeah. that storytelling recreated. In games, yeah, yeah, it it really is. It goes back to you know what 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 matters in games, characters, events, relationships, and for me. I would much rather play a game where I'm interested in what's happening than be... There's some really visually stunning games that are happening right sure, now. Yeah. And uh, the game developer conferences is happening right now in San Francisco, and we're sort of like, we can't be there right now. They're really focused on virtual reality. Sure. It's like, but before you can even get to virtual reality, I really think that you need to have strong storytellers in there first. Isn't it true, though, with virtual reality, we are going to have to have a shift back to storytelling, because when we look at things um, like uh, Microsoft's offering and the ability to enter an immersive environment within your home, what would be better than storytelling in that environment? To have a murder mystery happen right before your eyes and participate in it. It's kind of creepy, actually. It's creepy, but awesome. I can see it happening. It's, and, tr- it's true. You know, so what we've done is we've actually created a Blair calls it a fancy word processing you know it's like fancy word yep. that you can enter your people your places your locations so you're just like uploading graphics and typing in your text and saying okay so here are the fundamental things that tie events together so if you've been to our website and played some of our games you'll know what I mean by that and then there's a little bit of a scripting component using Lua scripting and okay you know for writers, what we're hoping to do is help them transform from traditional writers where they're writing linear stories into narrative designers. So does it almost become a, an education process as you've provided a platform for, for a, a writer to learn to create a game based on their writing? Absolutely, because they really have to think about, am I creating something where I'm just creating a, a visual component of my novel? Or am I creating a sandbox world where right. you as the audience, or like, do we call them readers? Do we call them players? We just call you the audience. So you as an audience member get to go in. Does it matter what order I explore the world in? Right. Am I creating something that's an open world for exploration? Am I creating what we call hmm. um, branching narratives? So one choice here affects how the rest of the story goes. So really it is absolutely an education of the writer and getting to think differently about narrative. There's obviously two facets to it. You've got your users. Uh, what do you call them? The audience. The audience. So the audience is really the reader and the, the game player. And then you've got the writers. So can I, as, a, as somebody who, uh, and this is not me, myself, Robbie Ferguson, but can I, if I was a writer, say, okay, I want to take my existing book and turn it into a game? Or... Let's actually write uh, a storyline for a game. You can do a number of different things. We are currently in beta. We're in open beta. Okay. It just means that if you are interested in coming and writing with us right now, you need to be a little bit patient while we sort out a few things. And we're starting right, okay. to do webinar courses so mm-hmm. that we'll sit, everybody will join in on a conversation, and we can brainstorm what your story might look like in, in a, a living, breathing, interactive world. Yeah. Are you using like a Google Hangout? Or I noticed that you do have a YouTube channel. We'll put that below. Yes. And on that channel, you have a, a really great assortment of step by step guides. Hey, if you want to be a game creator, just follow these guides. And we, so we don't have to get into the technical stuff here no. tonight because you've already done that and you can go to the YouTube channel. We've and We've tried learn to make it, it as easy as possible. I think really right now the only thing that's missing is the scripting, but there's, um, Okay. In the software, there's actually a and that's Lua. document. And it's Lua. Which is cool. Yeah, and it's, you know, for the people who are really into programming, it's there's IntelliType stuff there. So I think it's really cool. And it's, you could create something that's like five to min- ten minutes of gameplay. You could create a prequel to your novel if you wanted to promote right. your stuff. Or you can just play. You can sure. take photographs. It doesn't have to be 3D worlds. And it doesn't have to be illustrations. You could create a murder mystery in your own house. Cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm speaking with Gene Leggett. Uh, check out their website. It's onemorestorygames.com. What birthed the idea of One More Story Games? Hmm. Well, as I mentioned, Blair had worked at EA for eight years, 
And, so he's uh, got the experience, so but yeah. something must have made you go, you know what, let's, let's do this. Let's make this into an actual platform that people can use. I think going back to the, the time that he spent on recreating Ultima, I think what he really wanted at that point was to create something to let other people create other Ultimas. I think that was the right. genesis of okay. it. And he worked at Zynga for two years. And to just sort of see how the games industry has been changing and evolving. Blair and I both have English degrees. We're kind of nerds that way, but he also has the computing science background right, as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to it, who are we as humans? That's the one thing that we have is we have storytelling. We've been telling stories since cavemen <laughs> on the walls. And I think that's the really the thing that's missing right now is quality storytelling and why yeah. not have writers create the content sure so not what kind of stories are there on your platform right now right now um we have a murder mystery set in barry we have barry I right know. here um, can you tell us a little bit about it just brief sure it's your first day on the job isn't that how they all are you start? like a it's your first day super on the spy job. No, superhero you are just a plain old detective Okay, and, a plain uh, old detective. Is plain, there such a thing? Maybe there's a plain clothes detective. Oh, ah. you never know. I might be spying. <laughs> and so there's a murder at the construction site, and you need to figure out it's uh, it's a homeless person. But it doesn't seem right to you. And Something's everybody else off. wants to write it off as a suicide. Okay. And they're like, hmm, I don't think so. So you got to look for the clues. you got to figure out. We put yeah. some subtle clues in there, and, yeah. and at first they were too subtle. So I'm like, okay, we got to... Okay amp it up a little That's bit. That's interesting because you don't get that feedback when you write a novel. Uh, maybe something's a little lacking, but I guess you would see that in your platform. You're going to get the feedback that, hey, I couldn't, uh, you know, you could almost see people going through the process. Where are they getting hung up? Where are they getting stuck? And hey, let's improve it. It's we actually have an analytics system in the background. Nice. So we can see what mouse click you made. So you as an okay. author yeah. will eventually have access to that information. Yeah. And so say you're creating something that has maybe eight different outcomes. Maybe the analytics will show you that 95% of the people choose path B. Like, isn't mm. that interesting? Interesting, yeah. And so maybe that will challenge you to up-level your writing as a narrative designer. Yeah. We have uh, two sort of sci-fi, we have a lot of, we have three stories that have female protagonists, because that's something we feel very strongly about is mm -hmm. diversity. Yeah. And the latest game that we have that I'm incredibly proud of is called Mandatory Upgrade X Marks the Spot, and it's a cyberpunk mystery. I want to talk a little bit more yeah. about that in a, in a couple moments' time. I want to give the opportunity to you viewers, uh, if you're watching live, uh, join us in the chat room. Jeff, Sasha, you're over there, um, and uh, I'm sure you have questions for us as well, uh, for Jean in particular. Uh, and if you have any questions, Sasha is watching the chat room and, uh, and able to get those in to us um, here in the studio. So far, there's really only one suggestion, and it's a story related to Sasha and spilling things. All oh, we've actually got a story writer in <laughs> the yes. chat room? Yeah, they want to write a story about um, Sasha spilling things all over electronics and what happens to her in the studio. So, Gene, the question then becomes, what can, uh, <laughs> what can somebody who is, has ideas do to participate in your platform as a writer. As a writer. And I want to talk about the gamer too, because yes. a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, I'm not a writer. I could never write. Um, and, and that's probably me. And, and I don't have the time to write. So I'd like to sit down and, and just enjoy the platform. So I want to talk about that too. Sure. But for the writers and people who have ideas, how do they get involved? Number one, I always say check out the games that we have first so that you have a nice idea of what we mean by story games. Good suggestion, yeah. Because I feel like we live in that hybrid space between ebook meets computer game. And mm. if we're going to be publishing things on your behalf, because we do actually pay the writers, uh, kind of crazy, right? So you guys should write games. Do I have to and, pay to write? Um, well, you get our software for free for a couple of months. and So it's a, it's a trial? and It's a trial period. Yeah, okay. And then it's a very reasonable fee. So do you almost, and this is kind of sidestepping a little bit, but just to understand a little bit, do you almost become a virtual publishing company in a way? Yeah. yeah. So you're watching for those good stories. Yes. You want to buy those stories we from the writers. We have some really fantastic. I'm pumped because now that the software is more or less solid and complete, we now are looking to publish new content, solid content. Mm -hmm 
Because there's, there's a difference. You know, there's going to be everybody else, and then there's going to be, like, the stellar people. Sure. And we think that over the next six months, we have six new story games. So every four to six weeks, we wow. have new stories coming out. Something well, from, like, a an indigenous space adventure to a supernatural horror to some comedic journey through Dante's Inferno. Like, just a, a wide variety. And, and as far as your audience goes, what is the age spectrum? You know, it's funny because most people don't realize this. Half the people who are buying games are women. And the largest chunk of that is women over 30. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. So is that, the, and that's, a, that's they're also readers uh, a lot yes. of times. Not to stereotype, but yes. it's true. Um, so it, are the games appropriate for younger audiences? Or? Yeah, we have a rating system on there. So okay. right now we have some games that are for like 10 and up. Great. Where there might be like a suggestion of violence, but it's just okay. mentioned once because maybe it's the dead body. Sure. But it's not like CSI where it says, you know, this would be inappropriate. Right, yeah, yeah. There is one game on there that was written by a Barry police officer. It's called A Pot Get in the Ring. Yeah. There is an explicit torture scene of a suspect in there, so okay. it's rated M for mature. Right. And, um, yeah. That's great. Yeah, but we, we try to put that on there because we don't want... Well, we want to be able to say to the parents, you, you should be watching what your kids are playing in the first place. Sure. Yeah, and that's not always easy, so having the rating system in place is a, a great idea. Jeff, any questions for us in the chat room, or do you have any of your own? Uh, actually, yeah, there's one question in the chat room from Rev D. Jenk, and he's uh, asking, is there a way to give suggestions to a creator for ideas for future versions of a game? So existing mm-hmm. writers on your platform, is there a way to, to give them feedback or provide them with some kind of that is suggestions? That is something that we're going to be developing as we move forward. So mm-hmm. right now, there's no way for you to give a rating on a game that you've played. Right. But that is a feature that's being built in mm. or building in. You know how Twitch has the uh, tip jar? Yep. So there's going to be a tip jar in there. So if you're like, you know what? I paid money for this game, but this was fantastic. Right. So we're still building those features in. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the core problems that's happening in the games industry is we have created a freemium model where everybody's like, I'm going to give you your first hit for free. Okay. And we know what model that works under. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to say, listen people spent a lot of time to build these stories sure. and they should be they should be paid for their work and we should start to appreciate artists and writers more sure absolutely and and i think that's and the rating system strikes me as something that would do very nicely as a if i was a writer i'd like that feedback i i love my wife is an author and and Ooh. we watch we watch the amazon ratings because those are important to yes. to us as a, as publishers and and to her as the author to and to I get think that feedback also it's important when it says verified purchase sure you know we really yeah. want to could there, you say there would be a way for us. suggestion made it to the end of the book yes actually so that's what i was thinking because it wouldn't really be fair i was i saw on goodreads somebody had trashed a friend's right. novel read the back and she said she read the first <laughs> 15 pages of it and come on hated it. didn't even she get into it one and i thought this is actually one of the best books i've read in a really long time yeah. and i read the whole thing yeah so wouldn't it be cool if you could say listen Maybe you gave it two stars, but you only played 15 minutes of it. And other people are like, sure. I played to the end. Oh, yeah. my God, this was amazing. Yeah, that's so important knowledge for sure. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how we can track that over time. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie Ferguson, and I'm joined by Jean Leggett. And she is from One More Story Games.com. The technology behind your platform... Right now, your website is predominantly Flash-based. Yes. I understand that that's, there's some transition happening there, but what other technologies are available or, or are in line uh, to be uh, brought to your, your product? Right. So right now, the authoring tool, you know, thanks Chrome. Chrome no longer supports Silverlight. So for people who want to do the authoring component of it, they actually have to open up Firefox and oh, okay. download. So it's a Silverlight app? It's a Silverlight app that you okay. download, and we pretty much update it maybe once a week when we're implementing new features and okay. stuff like that. So it's like, that's the only reason I have Firefox on my computer. Sure. That's fine. So it will work on Windows, Mac, or Linux then? Uh, it works on Windows right now, yep. and we are working on Mac development. That's okay. been on the list for a really long time. So it would be something other than Silverlight? Or mono? Yes. So we are looking to upgrade the entire system. So right now you have 
the software, and then yep. you have the game portal. And software is in Silverlight, and the game portal is in Flash. Okay. Both of which are not where we want to be sure. a year or two from now. So yep. they'll both be integrated into an HTML5 Great. cloud-based okay. program. So what happens for iOS players on a phone where no, Flash is sadly, not? Sadly, they cannot play our games. Just However, yet. However... If you play the Facebook app, because we are on Facebook oh, really? as well, okay. if you play the Facebook app on anything other than Safari, so if you have okay. Mac Chrome and you play the Facebook version, do you know what I mean? Like a little bit roundabout, as a technology sure. Company, yeah. Apple and this is, these are the things. Crazy. These are the things that you you know you encounter as a tech company and you know as a startup and and just getting the ball really rolling and oh, great, you know. F- f- Firefox is blocked Flash. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, ah. So the, these are the growing pains but that we, we go do through. have, you can play our games. We're in the Google Play Store. I always Fantastic. recommend that so people So it's on use, Android. Yes, I always yeah. tell people they should use the quotation marks and look for story worlds. Otherwise, they'll be like shuffling through okay. a lot of Yes, for games. sure. Yeah. And so that's, they can download story that. Story worlds. It's really awesome on tablet. No I doubt. I think it was like made for tablet, Perfect. to be honest. You've got to check it out. It's onemorestorygames.com. Story World in the Google Play Store. Story Worlds. 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 Plural. Multiple in worlds. quotes. Multiple worlds. What's next in line for One More Story Games? Ah, well, we made a pretty exciting announcement last month that we are working with a number one New York Times bestseller. Did nice. I tell you that? Uh, I've read about it. Oh. So, you know, I, d- I don't have the inside skinny, but you can give it to me now. Oh, well, that's It's just great. between you and I, so okay. and nobody else nobody here. Else, nobody, nobody else. Nobody else here. The lady that wrote the novels, the Suki Stackhouse series, yeah. which became HBO's True Blood. You know, the vampires. Right, and the, yeah. The adult romance. Yeah. We'll call that that, yes. I'm totally into that. <laughs> so, her name but is But you're 30-something Harris. ladies, maybe. You know what? That is... She has sold to date over 36 million novels. And she's working with and she's One working More Story with Games. One More Story Games, a wow. tiny startup studio yeah. north of Toronto. Because what we want to do is we're taking a couple of her older mystery novels and turning them into story games. So that if you oh, have fantastic. read her novel, you will still have Supplement a new experience oh, nice. of the world. And if you've never encountered her before, you'll be like, wow, I really loved, I love the characters, I love what's going on here. I want mm-hmm. to go read the novel and see how it's different. Tell me about your latest release. Mandatory Upgrade, X Marks the Spot, was designed by a game designer in Victoria. And we like to try and keep things as Canadian as possible, but we do have some really great people outside of Canada. And The next really, one could be you. It, it could be, could be you know. You. And what's really cool is you go in and you play Special Agent Rachel Varley. It's your face, first day Sweet. on the job. Sweet, I have always wanted to be Rachel Varley. It's your first day on the job. You've been going through training, and there's this hideous murder that's happened. Okay. And they're trying to figure out how this happened because there's it's a cyberpunk thing. There's some cool technology. So going we get to on. dress up like that? Uh, no, there's no dress up. <sighs> I I don't know if that's your. These thing. are not these are not text based entirely. We've these got a lot of visual. imagery. Yes, we've got soundtracks there is as sound, well. And it's very immersive. It. I never, when we started playing, because we've been developing the engine and we've been making the games as we've gone along. Yeah. So the more recent games obviously have benefited from the more recent features. So when I go back and I play some of the older games that don't have the music, right? I'm like, these are okay. Yeah. But now that you play the ones with the music and yeah. like Hard Vacuum Lullaby we released in, I think it was November and it's the space adventure. It's free, it's half hour. And all of a sudden there's a moment where you have to decide are you going to use a metal 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 locker door or your arm to stop the machine oh my and the sound effect will be very different oh depending my. on what you choose yeah okay you so you're know. gonna have to check that one out <laughs> as well as uh, you know check out uh, the synopses that are on the website find out which one is of interest to you and then just click the play now button yeah i guess it's as simple and as that have fun have fun we've we've if you get stuck there's little uh, help buttons there and we're very open to feedback we're on Facebook we're on Twitter YouTube we're everywhere very good 
Well, thanks for being here, Jean. And uh, do check out our platform. It is onemorestorygames.com. And uh, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think about the platform and uh, what it is that uh, Jean and her company are doing. And uh, make sure you uh, you do check that out today. So thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having And congratulations on launching this. This is, I Thank mean, you. I know you're a few years in, and it's it's really snowballing now. But uh, there are some ex- exciting things to come for you. And we're really excited to I think this is our know that year. you're local. Yeah, yeah. This is it. So all the best. Thank you. Thanks. Over to you guys. Uh, you can take it away. All right. Cool. Uh, I've never sat in your seat before, so uh, yeah, this is <clears> weird for me. It's like the first time I like it. Had some hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thanks so much. That's our show. Uh, great times. Good times, yeah. yeah. It's nice to have you back, Sasha. Thank you, thank, thank you. I'll thank be you for finally showing up. Well, you really handled the news quite well. I well, you say. set the bar high, and yeah. I had to watch many episodes to learn just how to do it quite right. Not quite there. Still I'll, have a few mess ups, but I'll get there. I, it was a blast to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I try to read the news, and she's over there going, "Really? Ah, yeah." I'm thinking, Sasha, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I was working on it. Yeah, well. I almost had right. you. That's right. <laughs> Robbie's been working on it, too, with uh, putting in those uh, nice uh, tongue twister words and, like, you know, the syllables that spin on each other. Huge so like, Japanese yeah. names. No, he played that game with me week thing. after week. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, I don't know, it's like a sick fantasy of his to make us stumble or something. I know. I think we need to write a story about it. That's Put it on the website. Let's do it. I'm, I'm totally all for it. Okay. Or a game. Thanks so much for watching us this week. We'll be back next week. For anybody who's just tuning in now going, what, the show's over? Yes, time change in Canada. You missed it. It's now like, well, it's, it's after 8 o'clock here. So uh, now you know for next week, for the next six months, change a clock by an hour for when this starts. That's right. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be back the next time the time changes. That's right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> There's a button there that says extra. That's extra? the one you want to push. Where's yeah. the extra? Extra. Um, right there. Where? Where? Oh, oh right. there we go.